YouTube, Lenny Slide, WarRoadTraining.com. Welcome to another video. Today we are going to do punch the face with an Uka Nagashi hand deflection Tei Sabaki into a Kokunage type of throw. Um, this video is kind of a mixture of both with uh, the, the Uke and the Nage relationship on how both parts play within this technique. Um, but it's going to be a little bit more emphasized on the Ukemi aspect of it. So with that being said, grab a beer, whatever you need to do. I'll be right back. And we're going to get cracking on this video. See you in a second. Kokunage is what this technique is called. Um, there might be a different name for this, but this is basically what I was told on what this technique was called. Uh, a long time ago when I used to train with Kevin Cho Sensei with uh, the Chicago Aikikai and ASU, I remember, you know, I was, um, was kind of like a, a technique name whore, if you will. I wanted to learn every name, terminology of every technique and every application. What's the name of this throw? What's the name of that throw? I already knew the attacks, but there were a lot of throws that we did in class, techniques that we did, that Cho Sensei never would start off doing a technique and then at the end of the technique tell you what the technique actually was, what it was called. I don't know if he assumed that you would know what the attack was and that was the important aspect of it, but I remember Cho Sensei would say, if you don't know what it is, it's Kokunage. So that was kind of like the, the fail-safe thing if you didn't know what the name of the technique was, it was Kokunage. I thought, personally, I think it was more like if Kevin Cho Sensei didn't know the name of the technique, he would just tell you that it was Kokunage. Um, this technique I didn't learn from him. I learned this technique from, uh, from uh, George Angulo Sensei. And um, it's, a, it's, it's a unique technique. There's a lot of movement involved. There's a lot of flow that's involved with this. Um, the application is straight down on the ground. You can do this very soft. You can do this very hard. But a lot of the emphasis is on the uke, especially when you're doing the ura version where you're ten kani. Okay, the omote version, same thing in a sense. The movement is faster and sharper with the omote version than the ura version because you're obviously going behind and applying application. The uke has to turn, engage his hips to get in position to see where he's going to take you, Kemi. Where the omote side, you're actually putting them faster into a throw because they have to turn your hips, their hips immediately to take you coming. So with that being said, hi, Rod's here today. Hi, Onigashimasu. So for Makowski, remember, important aspect of this is that when you punch, you're not punching over here. You're punching straight to the face. Our rule of thumb is if you don't move, you get hit. If your hand deflections don't work, if you can't do basics, especially in my Aikido, if you cannot train in my basics and utilize them and perfect them, you're not going to be able to do my Aikido because 99% of the stuff that I do starts off with a Tei Sabaki with a hand deflection. So you always have to incorporate that and whenever you're training, if you're looking to discover new things and come up with ideas of your own with technique, always incorporate the number one principle in the beginning of technique is not getting punched, grab, kicked or taken to the ground. So how do you start off a technique by not falling short of that, Tei Sabaki with evasions, that's first and foremost your first line of defense. Okay? No matter what it is, if a punch comes in, moving out of the way is going to disrupt your balance. Using a hand deflection 
is going to allow you to get in position to actually apply technique. So it's always first and foremost, tesabaki, hand deflections, evasions, whatever you want to call it. It's the first and foremost thing that you want to apply in 90% of your training. So when the cow seat comes in, you're punching straight to the face. So left side. So as he punches, this comes straight in to your face. You don't move, you get hit. Your ukenagashi can't be this because it's going to go right over the top of your arm and you're going to get hit. That's why this is important that ukenagashi raises up. Okay. The other thing too, when you're doing this, you're not raising up the person's arm. The person's punching through you. So that power should, the second you make contact, this starts to roll. This is getting him to the point where this is still coming forward and you're getting out of the way. Then from there, this hand, I'm a little bit late with this because I was showing you Kinagashi, wants this to go back. So once you get to here, this hand is coming underneath. Okay? Hello, here it is. Comes up underneath. As you Tenkan, he moves, turns, and you push this down. You push the hand down to where they take you coming. Same side. So, ukenegashi, capture, then throw. Okay? Couple key points, remember I said this is more, this is a little bit of both for uke and nage, but for the relationship of uke versus you, the nage, the ukemi has to turn at a certain point. Okay, so I'm gonna show you those, those key points right now, is that when he punches, you get to this position, you start to move. The uke does not turn right here. That doesn't happen. Because then obviously you're throwing this way. Okay? You want to get him. What you don't want to do too is you don't want this to keep going. And then this becomes really big and then it gets extended. You don't want that either. Right? You want this to get to the point of the uke moves here and then the throw happens. Okay, the application of this with uh, the application of this from here to here. This is where he would take a step and turn his hips. So you're also going to move your foot into position. Okay, and then this application is straight down as you apply. Come back to here. If you do this, okay, to where this is up here and you're doing that up high there's room for error so as i'm doing this he takes his left hand and comes up underneath with this don't grab you're moving too soon he comes up underneath extends this because i'm naturally probably going to hold on once i start feeling that and that's when he's going to apply a reversal kaishi waza so you don't want to go high with this technique because then that's where a reversal happens you want this application to be the point where happens well. The application is well. So one more time. So the ukenegashi movement through, throw. Okay? Same side. Ukenegashi, throw. Okay? Rotate a little more. Remember, this is about the ukemi aspect of this. No matter how fast I'm going, okay, this, see you turn right in there. I'm going to kick you right in the nuts at that point. You have to protect yourself. So as this happens, this moves. Then the throw happens. Uke always has to protect themselves from possibly being hit, being hit in the groin. There's a lot of times I see technique to where the uke attacks and the uke is actually open. There's holes in every martial arts system, no matter how you look at it. But the uke will be open to where it's like, hey, I can... I can kick him in the groin, I can do this, I can do that. And then you don't have to go any further with the technique. Or this is training. I, you know, the, the Kemi side of this is really the important aspect of this. Because the faster that you have Kemi, the faster response you have Kemi, the harder, the more practical, the Nage can apply technique. Okay? And then obviously the result on the street is somebody's eating gravel and he gives a shit how the way how they fall. I don't care. So one more time. So as he does that, punch the face, ukenegashi movement, and then move the one. Good. One more. So ukenegashi, throw. One more 
time. Also, when the punch comes in, then I'm going to take you. So when the punch comes in and he moves, your hand's not doing this. Okay? Now, remember, this is Aikido training. A little bit different than punch pull back scenario. So once this happens, he's capturing. This isn't doing this because it naturally turns you in that position where he can knee me in the groin, kick me in the groin, whatever. The idea of this is the ukemi side. So you're moving through and then you're taking the ukemi. Okay? So you're moving through with this, right? You're moving through. Notice how I'm getting in position, I'm protecting myself. So I'm not leaving myself open to where a strike could happen. One more time. So boom. In position. Okay, you Switch one more time. Watch how I turn my hips. So I move through. Boom. I turn my hips. Then I take deep count. Last one. Nice punch. So you move through. Go. I lied one more time. Pulling back. Right. Look where you're at. One more time. So, Hukanagashi. Move. Roll. Okay? And just for the sake of it, the emote version, we'll do it from here. The emote version is shredded and slow. But Hukanagashi comes up, captures this right from here. And then pushes. Applies technique. His ukemi is going to have to be faster. One more time. So, ukenegashi, throw. Last one. Quick ukemi. See how hard that was? Okay. Last one. Okay. Hey. One more time. So, ah, da, da, da. You're right there. That's a hard technique to do. You have to have a really fast okay. Rod, height, or excuse me, don't want to got this So, got to have fast, 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 cat-like reflexes, especially on the multi version. So, that was Kowski, Ukenegashi, and the Kokunage. <clears throat> Benefits are for more of the uke than the nage. So if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time, peace out.